Hi, I'm Papa Tone, and today we're going to talk about a change in direction for our R2-D2 droid build. A few weeks ago, I did a little experiment that changed all of my ideas about how this project was going to go. I printed this guy out. This is the lower front vent on R2-D2. Taking this off the printer, I felt a tremendous sense of possibility, potential. I realized I didn't have to order the part from anywhere. I didn't have to wait for it to come through the mail, hope it didn't get damaged. And this was a change in direction for me because initially I thought I wanted all of these parts to be metal. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I suppose maybe someday I'll hopefully build a droid that's like that. For now, the first time I'm doing this is essentially sort of like a prototyping stage for me. And uh, that's why it's nice to have a 3D printer. You can have an idea, you can print it out, you can make use of other people's knowledge, other people's models, which is in this case what's happening here. Uh, I got these 3D print files from Patreon. A guy named Michael Baddeley has put his extensive uh, library of 3D print files on the internet. There's one build which is called the version two build, which is designed for smaller 3D printers. Uh, like if you have to split the parts up or slice them, you can do you, a whole build of an entire 3D printed R2-D2 droid on a printer like this, which is the FlashForge Adventurer 4. The bed is about 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, I think maybe, or 220 millimeters, something like that. Or you can do the newer version, which is the Mark III body, which can be printed on a large size or a large format 3D printer like a Creality CR10 5S or S5, uh, which is a 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter print bed. And uh, some people like Gordon Tarpley have used that uh, for large size prints, but I'm a having some trouble as to if I want to invest in one of those because it's an older model. Some people say it checks out. Some people say it's too old, it's too rickety, and uh, it's too unpredictable. So if you have an opinion on a large size 3D printer that you really like that uh, is in the, you know, it doesn't cost as much as a small car. Like this one was about 800 bucks. Uh, I bought it that way because you could just pull it out of the box, turn it on and start printing. There was very little calibration, that kind of stuff. But I wanted to show you a couple of the parts that got me excited about this. Because when I printed this out, I wasn't necessarily committed to this kind of building. Initially, I was going to do what's called a styrene droid build, which is a little bit less expensive. Um, and uh, you can build it out of flat pack plastic like that stuff down there. Um, which I may still do at some point, whoops, uh, which I may still do at some point, but uh, for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch directions and 3D print, and here's why. First of all, it's pretty darn fun getting parts off the printer like these. Uh, these all printed at once. This is uh, one of the other vents, and what's great is, I mean, this stuff is so well designed, you can just press fit it together. There we go, there's one. Choo-choo in the background, and there's two. There we go. Check that out. All right, so all printed at one time. Took about six hours and uh, needs post-production and sanding and painting and all that kind of stuff, but that is uh, part of the 3D printing process. Where I really committed to this idea, though, is when I started printing larger parts, which was just earlier this week. Uh, this is R2-D2's ankle. It came right off that printer in one piece, took up the whole bed, of course. Uh, and then I have this little, you know, ankle cylinder here, and it, it doesn't really look like much, but when you put them together, and you see that the tolerances are so good, straight off the printer, I can just put this together, and I've got R2-D2's ankle in my hand, you know? Uh, it's just really exciting, and um, makes me feel good, it's fun. And there's an end in sight in terms of the project. You know, you have something to build, to do, to put in your hands. So many disciplines to learn or learn more about uh, in terms of drive systems and wiring and how you organize the electronics, the electronics themselves, the operating system that you use to make the droid move and talk and uh, be have a personality. 
it's just really exciting. So this process will probably take me years uh, to complete, but I wanted to drop in from time to time just to uh, sort of mark some of the major passings. I, I'm not going to uh, document every single part of the process because uh, I wouldn't be focusing on the build in that case. But if you want to learn about this, check out Michael Baddeley's Patreon, uh, which is where he has the 3D printer files. And of course, astromech.net, which is where I started uh, a couple of years ago. I got uh, my little approval that's required to have membership. Um, and then I started asking people questions and there's still a zillion things I don't know but there are great people in that community who will help you get started. Um, as you'll hear often on YouTube, most people start with the dome, they build that, and then if they don't like the process, then they have a dome and it's over. But um, I decided to start printing parts because that's what I have available to me right now. We also have the dome here in house. And I suppose once I get all of this stuff together. I'll maybe start doing some of one and some of the other, depending on the day, but who knows? But anyway, we're gonna 3D print our droid. It's exciting. If you have any questions, drop me a line. Otherwise, uh, you know, do a little research. See if this is something you wanna get into. May the force be with you. Remember to like yourself as much as you possibly can every day. Share your respect and kindness with everybody around you and subscribe to periodicals of note like astromech.net and fill your head with good, solid, empirical information. I'm Papa Tone. Take care. <laughs>